Hello people, Andrew Fantasia here. There's been a new update on Marvel United Multiverse, so let's get started. So I checked Twitter late last night, not expecting anything, and all of a sudden, what does Simon do? They drop a web-covered bombshell into our laps. Here's the deal. Marvel United Multiverse is set to be our third core box for this game. It's season three, it's our third core box. Makes sense. Math. Sometimes I can do it. Lo and behold, what do they announce? But a fourth core box, just on its own, not part of a campaign or anything, coming out later this year, probably in the summertime. We don't have a release date yet, but this is it here. It's Spider Geddon. And it is a buttload of alternate universe spider people and some of their villains. This is almost tit for tat the original core box that I had on my season three wish list. It was a Spider-Verse core box with Spot as a villain and, and some, some of these other characters included in there. So, oh my God, what are they doing to us? I don't know, but I like it. Simon's website has been really light on details. We have not seen a picture of any of the minis yet or what color they will be, you know, who's a hero, who's an anti-hero, etc. We'll get into the characters in a minute. All it has said is that this is coming later in the year and it's going to replace the two-wave shipping that happened during the first two seasons of Marvel United. So instead of selecting two-wave shipping for Multiverse and getting the core box in the summer and waiting till next January or whatever for everything else, all the Multiverse stuff is coming in January 2024. Hopefully, hopefully not later than that. And this Spider-Geddon thing is what's going to tide us over halfway through this year. And I think that's okay with pretty much everybody because it means slightly cheaper shipping rates while still getting that little something something to keep us busy for a few months until the Kickstarter arrives on our doorstep and we jump up and down like kids at Christmas or like adults at Christmas or like this adult at Christmas. The website also says, quote, Marvel United Spider-Geddon is a direct-to-retail core box and will not be part of the upcoming Marvel United Multiverse Kickstarter. However, it is certainly a part of the multiverse, and you can expect content in the campaign to interact with and complement this box in exciting ways. So what does that mean? The only thing I can think of is they're talking about this campaign and we still don't know the meat of what this multiverse campaign is yet, but the only thing we know so far is that it's got equipment cards. So it only makes sense to me that it's going to come with equipment cards for some of these characters, right? Scarlet Spider's probably got some web shooter action happening. What's her name? The anime one, SPDR. She's going to have something to do with her mech suit or something, right? Those are going to be equipments. So that tells me that if they're going to do this for Spider-Geddon, which they probably are, it's almost a given, that we are almost definitely going to get equipment cards retroactively for season one and season two characters. This all but confirms it in a way. And I hate saying the word confirm when I'm not 100% sure because it makes me sound like a weird YouTuber and I don't really go in for that sort of thing. But that's what it sounds like. I'm just putting two together. I'm just doing math. So maybe... That's what we have to look forward to, getting a Captain America shield card, getting a Gambit playing card card. That's, wow. Now that I said that out loud, that sounds kind of interesting. Maybe you actually have to throw the card at another player. Please don't do that, kids. You can put eyes out with these things. But the sky's the limit when it comes to equipment, if that's the case. And then, of course, as with every Marvel United, this is definitely going to be interchangeable and plug and play, because that's what we love. So these characters can all team up with some X-Men and a vision to fight Mojo because that's the beauty of this game. So speaking of these characters, let's take a look at what the box art is giving us. It's a core box, so there's 10 characters. My God, I love that. I wish every box had the same amount of characters as a core box. Let's take a look. So we've got the aforementioned SPDR. I think that's how you say her name out loud from Into the Spider-Verse. Yay, amazing. She's a primo character from that movie. Why not? And so is Spider-Man Noir. So that's two great characters right there. Then front and center, directly front and center, we've got Symbiote Spider-Man. Fun fact, he's not on my wish list. He almost was. But then I corrected myself because I didn't want 
my whole thing with this campaign was I didn't want alternate skins and costumes. I just wanted fully original characters. And yes, I consider people like Spider-Man Noir to be an original character because he's not really Peter Parker. He's this other guy. Whereas the symbiote costume and like Shuri Black Panther is just a character we've had before just with a different hat on, right? So that's what I wanted to avoid. I wanted to avoid like, guess what, guys? This new expansion is Wolverine, but he's got a new hat. I just, I prefer somebody fresh. I prefer a Red Hulk. I prefer Icarus and Cersei and Druig. I prefer characters that have not been touched in this game yet. Give me Lizard. Give me Morbius. Symbiote Spider-Man is probably the least exciting thing about this core box for me. But it still makes me excited. I'm not saying I hate it. It's just, it's cool. But everything else is so much cooler that Symbiote Spider-Man goes at the bottom. What has me very excited, somebody who was right near the top of my wish list in terms of how much I wanted him, Scarlet Spider, Ben Riley, the Scarlet Spider, the coolest looking alternate Spider-Man costume in my opinion. God damn, I am so happy that Scarlet Spider is gonna be in this game. You have no idea. Wow, who else do we got here? Spider-Punk. He was on my list too, Spider-Punk. I know nothing about Spider-Punk. I just saw images that uh, he was going to be in uh, Across the Spider-Verse, and I thought, that's a cool-looking character, and he's a skin in the uh, PlayStation game. So I put him on the list just for funsies, and there he is! Great! Amazing! It looks like he's got an electric guitar, which is so cool. I love that. I don't know what he's going to do with that guitar, but guaranteed that's going to be a gear card, and I'm already waiting by my mailbox for it. Silk. There's another character on the wish list. Look at all the characters we are scratching off the wish list. This box is just glorious. Silk is in the game now. I don't know too much about her either. I know she's another alternate spider person from another dimension, but I'm glad to have Silk on board because she looks cool. She's a unique character that we don't have yet in the game. Sign her up. Rounding out the spider people, we've got the superior Spider-Man which is interesting because it's an alternate skin for both Spider-Man and Otto Octavius. I, this is a character I never expected to see, but I'm happy he's here. I don't know the logistics of Superior Spider-Man. This was after my time, but it's Superior Spider-Man, which is really, really cool. And I don't know 100% yet, but I think it's safe to assume this guy might be an anti-hero because that's Otto Octavius in that suit. And... From what I've read about this storyline, he goes to some dark places even though he's trying to be a superior Spider-Man. So, purple Spider-Man anybody? Maybe. The symbiote costume might even be purple. We, I, That's still iffy, but I think the odds of superior being purple are much better. Speaking of anti-heroes, another safe assumption, look down here in the corner, he's hiding, you almost can't see him. It's anti-venom or anti-venom, however you want to pronounce it, as long as you don't call him anti-may, who is one of my favorite Spider-Man characters, and if she shows up in this game too, I'm not going to complain. Anti-Venom is on this box. Again, that's a character from after my time. I don't know if he's good or bad or both. I think he's both. If you're an Anti-Venom fan, please let me know in the comments what this character's deal is. But I think, and this has me excited, so I hope, he's going to be purple. Because purple things taste special if uh, the Welch's Grape Juice commercials are any indication. And also, that means we've got another hero and another villain to contend with. Purple characters make me very excited. Anti-Venom would be a great addition to this list. Imagine having Spider-Man and Anti-Venom and Venom facing off against Carnage. That sounds like the most fun thing ever. Is it next January yet? Moving over here to the opposite corner is Spot, who is the villain that I thought would be the premier villain in my original core box idea because it just ties into the movie that's coming out this summer. So it looks like Simon are doing all of that after all. They're just doing it in an unexpected way. Spot is going to be a villain in this box. Makes total sense. Cash in on that movie and give us a Spider-Man character to boot. It all works out. I don't know how Spot is going to work. I have some ideas for some mechanics of what different villains could do that we haven't seen yet. And maybe I'll put that in another video in the future. It'll be just trickier to film because I would want to actually show you the board to see what I'm talking about. But Spot might fall under the category of uh, one of our more unique villains just based on what his power set is. Taron Holes in the fabric of reality, turning reality into Swiss cheese and just throwing a fist through one hole and punching you through another. Let's see if I can make that look cool in this. Like something like that. Last but not least, the front and center villain on this box here, somebody I never expected to see, Morlin 
first time I heard about this character, I thought he was just like a cheap Morbius knockoff because he's just another vampire man looking person. Uh, it turns out there's more to him than that. He's part of this group called the Inheritors or something. They had the whole Spider-Verse thing as part of their package. Like they were, he was the main villain in all of that and supposedly really, really powerful. Am I as excited for Morlin as I would be for a Morbius anti-hero? No, because I know so little about Morlin, but he's going to be another villain. I assume he's not an anti-hero because I just, I feel like this guy's just an a-hole. So he's just going to be a, a red figure. That's the thing about Marvel United now. Since season two, when a character's figure is red, you know they're bad. There, there's no redeeming them. I still don't know why Apocalypse was purple. That still doesn't sit right with me. The guy's a douche. Anyway, so Morlin is coming. The one thing... Again, the characters, the two characters have nothing to do with each other. But the one thing that gives me a little bit of hope here is that if we can get Morlin, we can absolutely get Morbius, right? And I keep talking about Morbius as if I'm like some huge fan. I'm not. You know, I didn't really care for the character in the cartoon all that much. I didn't love the movie. It's just the idea of this iconic Spider-Man character as a purple anti-hero in this game just feels so right to me. So I just really want him to show up. Uh, but Morlin is a cool addition. It's an outside the box character. And I love when Marvel United throws these in every once in a while, right? Characters I've never heard of like Phantom X or Dupe or Shatterstar. Uh, I didn't really read a lot of comics in the 90s, so I'd never heard of Shatterstar. People like that who I'm like, oh, I don't know who this is, but okay, Mastermind? I don't know, but fine. And then at the end of the day, it's just another cool, fun character to add to the list. So why not? I have no qualms with that. Welcome aboard, Morlin. I'm happy to have you here. So with this in mind, taking into account that we are now getting Silk, Spider-Man Noir, Spider-Punk, Scarlet Spider, and Spot, a lot of S's, that is five more characters that we can check off of my wish list. And if you have not seen our first video where I bring up my giant wish list for what I hope to get in season three. Um, you can find a link to that in the description below. The wish list is madness and I apologize for it in advance, but at the same time I make no apologies because it was a hell of a lot of fun to make and it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun to see how much of it becomes reality. So that's a big number of check marks off my list. Lots of Spider-Man characters, obviously. If we get a box that's lots of Hulk characters next, my list is pretty much halfway done. But that's the extent of what we know about Spider-Geddon. Retail only core box coming sometime later this year. The movie, the Spider-Man movie comes out in June. So I'm going to assume we'll see this box late July, early August. That seems about right to me. Cash in on the hype. Wait till the movie has had some hype to build around and kids are chomping at the bit for Spider-Man stuff and bring the game out. And that gives us a nice comfy six month window where we have six months to play around with this box of toys. And once that's done, and once we start turning to the horizon and looking for more, we'll start seeing the Kickstarter rewards being shipped out for Multiverse. Uh, that just works like clockwork as far as I'm concerned. I already know what I'm gonna be doing from summer to this time next year. And it's going to evolve a lot of webs. So thank you so much for watching today, everybody. As this Kickstarter comes out and as news keeps trickling in, please join me here. You are all welcome to join me and just share in the fun and excitement of Marvel United Season 3 and whatever this is, Season 3.5, Season 4, I don't know. Whatever spider Geddon is, we're sharing in the excitement of that as well. I'm Andrew Fantasia. I will see you here next time for whatever comes next in the Master Plan.